Hi there, in this tutorial we are going to teach you how to set up SketchUp completely. This includes installing SketchUp, licensing SketchUp, turning on additional toolbars, creating keyboard shortcuts, creating custom default templates, and setting up layout as well as creating templates within layout. So first what you need to do is we need to download SketchUp. You can do this by visiting our website and here is the URL at the top of the left hand corner of the screen. Please note you will need to register to our website to be able to download it. So then we need to click on download uh, the relevant version, so Windows 64 bit. Once SketchUp is downloaded, you can then click on the download to launch that. And we say yes, we want to install it. Okay, so it looks like we need this Visual++ runtime. So we'll install that. Okay, so now that um, the C++ is installed, we can continue on with our installation. So click on Next, um, and just use the standard location for installing to, and install. This may take a, a few minutes. Okay, so then we can click on Finish. Then we can minimize uh, the web browser. And we now have three icons that appear. So obviously SketchUp Pro, Layout, which comes with the Pro version, and Style Builder. So first we're going to double click on SketchUp Pro. Next what we're going to do is agree to the licensing, licensing agreement and continue. Okay, so next, um, once you have your SketchUp Pro license, um, it should come in an email from us, you can expand the license area. So at the moment I've got um, a trial, so I can either click on, I want to click on add license, so I can add my license in. So from the email you can copy the serial number and the authorization code, however it could be easier if you go into the email and select the whole entire license, so that's the username, um, right down to when it expires and then click on control C, so hold control on your keyboard then press C, then go back into the licensing dialog and if you click on advanced then you can simply paste all the text into there. So technically you could select the whole entire email, copy it, paste it into this area here, click on add license and SketchUp will find the relevant info it needs to get started. Uh, next what we need to do is choose um, a template to begin from. So if we expand where it says templates um, I want to begin from construction documentation millimeters, so that's a good starting point. And what I also like to do is I like to turn off the screen because I don't really use it very often. Um, so I can untick it here before clicking on start using SketchUp. However, if you feel like you would like to leave it on for a while longer while you learn out more, uh, learn more, you can um, leave it open and at any time you can just untick this and then click on start using SketchUp. So Nick, the next thing to do is to um, set up the toolbars and interface. So when you first start up SketchUp it looks very simple, you know there's not much to it um, and so people think that it's a very simple tool, a very simple software and um, not as extensive as maybe they would like. 
but there are a lot of things hidden in SketchUp um, that we just need to turn on with the toolbars. It's quite easy to do. If you go to View, Toolbars, we can turn on the advanced cameras. We want to turn on the camera, um, classifier, construction, drawing, dynamic components, edit. We're going to miss out getting started in a large tool set because essentially we're turning on um, all those tools anyway. Layers, location, measurement, principle, sandbox, section, shadows, solid tools, standard, styles, trimble connect, views and warehouse. Once these toolbars have have been turned on you can see that we can move them around um, and we can organize our interface a little bit better so I like to put my toolbars on the left hand side the main drawing tools that that is and you just simply just drag them off one side of the interface and onto the other. So you see when I hover over those dots it turns into the move tool then I can just shuffle those around until they align to how I want them to align. And you can make use of the area below as well where the measurements are. And layers we might put up here. Display and views. So Trimble Connect, I can put that down there. Dynamic Components can go over to there. Advanced Camera here and Sandbox there. So you can see I've just made the interface a lot bigger by adjusting those toolbars. Um, so that's obviously the goal. You want a big workspace to work on. Okay, so the next thing we would like to check is um, basically uh, creating a couple of scenes for our template. So if we go to Window, Default Tray, just make sure that um, the tray on the right hand side is showing. So if I hover on that you can see that's the default tray and I can click on the little pin and that locks that default tray. If any of these um, dialogues aren't showing, you can go to Window, Default Tray and just tick what you would like to see in there. So I typically like to have um, Match Photo on as well. I like to have Soften Edges on. And I like to have the Outliner turned on also. And you can collapse each of these dialogues by just clicking on the name. So I'm going to create two scenes for my template, which I like to use. So the first scene is a 3D view. So if I click on the first little icon, it will take you in directly to like a 3D looking view. I can then click on the plus button. And I'd like to give my scene a name, so I can click on the show details and call it 3D view. So that's my first view. The next view I want to have a completely flat 2D view. So to do that you need to go to camera, you need to untick perspective. So it's a parallel projection so or otherwise an orthographic view. Then go to a top view. This will ensure that when you click on your 2D view that it's a completely flat 2D view that can be sent over to layout um, and assigned a scale. So to have a scale drawing it needs to be orthographic or completely flat 2D. So I'm going to now click on the next scene to add scene and I'm going to call this one 2D view. Um, so you can name these however you like. You can name it top view relating to the view that you're looking at it from um, or you can just name it um, like I have Okay, so we're going to continue on with um, developing our template. So we've got a couple of views that we want to use now um, every time we start SketchUp. So if I click on 3D view, you can see that it goes to the 3D view. If I click on the 2D view, you can now transition to the 2D view. When I did that, you, know, you noticed probably that it took 
uh, a wee while to move to each view. So what you can do if you prefer is under Window, Model Info, then under Animation, you can untick Enable Scene Transitions and no delay between scenes. So when you click on the 3D view, then the 2D view, it's an instantaneous um, action. Next, let's look under the units. And I just want to double check that um, my settings are okay here. So I'm in decimal millimeters. My precision is zero, which is good. Enable snapping length is one. Or you can untick this if you don't want any snapping. Um, my angle units is precision is 0.1, or you can have it as zero as well. And I like to use 45 degree increments on my protractor or rotate tool. Um, because you can type in anyway what angle you want to use. Next I'm going to go to my styles. So if I expand styles here, I'm going to click on edit. And you've got five little icons here. The first one's edge settings, the second one's face settings, background settings, watermark settings, and modeling settings. So edge settings, um, I want to set my profiles to only one because I don't want thick edges around it. So type in one and enter. And you'll notice that the style has updated here, um, or needs updating, I should say. So we've got these little circular arrows and that indicates that we've changed the style and, it need, and the style needs updating. So then if I go to face settings, you can see the front face and the back face colors. So We've found over the years with our, and our experience that a beige looking colour is, is a good colour to have. So I'm going to click on the front colour and I'm going to choose the HSB colour picker. I just find that also a little bit easier to use. And I'm just going to move the slider until I find the sort of colour tone I want. And that looks pretty good. So that was approximately 40 and we'll do 35. So 40, 35, 100, okay. Then if you don't like seeing the back face of um, a 3D model, you can make the back face and front face the same color so it just looks the same. So we'll go 40, 35, 100, okay. So they should be the same colors now. And then we can move on to the watermark settings. So in the watermark settings, um, if you would like to add your own logo in SketchUp, you can click on the Add button. You can go and find uh, an image. So I'm just going to find our logo. And you have a few options. You can either have it as a background image or a foreground image, which is an overlay. So for example, let's leave it as an overlay. If we go to Next, we can decide whether or not we want it to be transparent. And you just drag the slider until you're happy. Then you go next again. Then you can determine whether or not you want it tiled across the screen, just in case you don't want somebody stealing your IP, or if you want it positioned on the screen. So you could have it in the bottom right hand corner, for example, and have that on every image that you do. Once you see, select finish, now you have a watermark and it will be on your drawing. Um, every time you produce an image. However, personally, I prefer to leave off the watermark because I usually would put my 3D models into layout and I can have a custom template there with all my uh, imagery and details there. So I'm going to just delete my watermark for now. Lastly, if we go to the modeling settings, we can um, change a few settings. So for selected I like to see blue when I select things. For guidelines I like to see red. So I'm just going to drag the colors to 0, 100, 100. So I've got red guidelines. It's easier to see. Section cut lines are black which is good. Section fill. Um, this is when you take a cross section and it's going to fill in the, the hollow areas with a fill. So I would typically just make that black and section cut line I would select one 
Okay, so we've now changed some styles and we need to update the style. So we can go over to here and there's a update styles with changes button. Click on that and the style's now been updated. And what's interesting is that that style's interlinked with the scene. So if I click on 3D view one, you can see that both of these scenes are sharing the same style. Okay, so lastly we're going to create um, some shortcuts. So if we go to Window, Preferences, we're going to go to Shortcuts, and we're going to create some shortcuts. So the first one I'm going to create is um, the X-Ray button, so X-Ray, and you can see the X-Ray tool appears. If I click in where it says Add Shortcut, I can press X, then click on the plus button, and that's now added as a shortcut. So that means it essentially is going to activate the X-Ray button up here by just pressing X. Oh, sorry, the X-Ray style, just by pressing X you can activate it. Next I'm going to type in hidden, and uh, sorry, no, we're going to go um, hide rest of model. So just hide rest, just to get it started. Then I found a feature which is called um, hide rest of model. So if you could do that also and press H in here and then add that. So it may say that another tool or um, uh, the viewing tool here in this instance is using that key. So I'm going to overwrite it. So now H has overridden it for hide rest of model. And we're going to talk a bit more about what hide rest of model um, is. So at any time or uh, for any tool you want to change the shortcut, you can go to Window Preferences, then Shortcuts, and just ensure that, um, uh, or just go into there and change the, the tools to be uh, your own specific shortcut. Um, while we're here, we might just go to um, OpenGL. So I like to untick use fast feedback. I find it just slows down the the um, the viewing of models because it's trying to stylize it and make it cleaner and crisper. But you don't te technically need it um, because you want a faster manipulation when using the orbit tool. I also like to use maximum texture sizes um, because when you bring in a floor plan, for example, with dimensions on it, you can see the image quality a lot better. So I would say yes. If we go to drawing, um, this is a really important one I find. Um, we want to disable the pre-pick on push-pull tool um, because this, uh, I'll talk about it more later, but um, basically when you click on the push-pull tool, I want it to deselect everything so that I can just push-pull the surface that I hover over top of. If you leave it unticked, then um, select the surface and you go to push pull it um, you might forget that you've pre-selected another surface somewhere else in the model and accidentally push pull it. Okay so we can click OK now and we are now ready to save our template so if you go to file then save template as or save as template I'm gonna call mine template and you can call yours whatever you like. Click in the description and then we'll add it as the file name also and you want to ensure that set as default template is still ticked and then select save. So now when I go file new I'm going to have the same settings every time I start up SketchUp. 